Welcome to Devlin No Olds Bard, where we look at the beautiful game through the eyes of former Nuts County, Birmingham City, Sheffield United, Watford, Warsaw, Winger, Paul Devlin. On today's show, we're going to be discussing the price of football, football on Saturday night, the managerial money ground, and whatever Devlin wants to tackle, plus our special guest, the horse. Boys, how are you? And welcome to Devlin's show. I'm good, mate. Thanks, Kev. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. Also, how are you, mate? Yeah, very well, thank you. First, though, before we get our teeth into the programme, let's talk about your foundation yep. and, Dev, what you're doing with coaching the kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah. first year, was. Yeah, yeah. I've got my own foundation. Uh, set it up quite a, about 18 months ago to help people with mental health issues, mm -hmm. homeless people and, and vulnerable adults. Uh, yeah. We've got properties all around Erdington uh, and the foundation side where we've got charity deals throughout the year. Uh, we're trying to raise money just to... As, as daft as it sounds, just to do simple little things, which we take for granted is taking bowling, taking mm -hmm. paintballing, taking on a days out and, and, and do things like that for them. So just trying to put a little bit back. How do people get in touch with you? How do people get involved? How, how can people come to you for help? What's the easiest way to on do On my that? Twitter, on, on my Facebook, uh, contact that, uh, and then we can we can go from there. It's like donations, like clothes. Yeah. Uh, I've got a company in Hills Owen, an embroidery company that have contacted me through that, that have... Uh, cocked up with a stitching, so yeah. they've donated to the clothes instead of going it abroad. They've they've left it into Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Got to go and pick it up coats, track suits, and, and tops. So it's really uh, helpful and very very worthwhile because mental health is an illness that touches an awful lot of us. Yeah, definitely. And I think the statistics are uh, at Christmas in Birmingham, yeah. and don't forget we're in 2017. Mm -hmm. It's over a thousand homeless people. Yeah, a thousand. And that's just in Birmingham itself, so it's rapidly rising and we hopefully we can do something with my name and, and the friends that I've got, like devs and people like that, helping me charity deals, then we can help them. Now, the next do that you, you've you got is, is it a reggae night? It's is a it reggae night, December the 1st. Uh, Tony T, the call him, he's doing it. we're doing a reggae night, struck disco, we've got some players coming. Yeah. Uh, to help out and auction and raffle, so hopefully should raise about five or six thousand that night. And we'll keep retweeting and sharing yeah. stuff. Yeah, definitely. Help, yeah. Yep. And Dave, how's the, uh, how's the coaching? You're in Chelmsley Wood tonight, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, Chelmsley Wood have a Tuesday. Yeah, coaching's going well. Uh, go all over doing it, as as you know. Um, mm. Obviously, me and Jeff have talked about doing something with, with his foundation, with some sort of coaching, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, some definitely. Side. So, if anybody knows if any ideas, really, what mm -hmm. we could do to put together to help the people that Jeff's helping, yeah. uh, you know, giving them a little coaching session once a week. We don't really know how to go about setting it up or no, really. no, definitely not. Um, but it's something we're interested in doing. So if there's anybody out there that knows or any ideas what mm -hmm. we could do, then uh, you know we're open to doing that to try and help Jeff and the people that he's helping. And again, it's something that us at SRB Radio <laughs> and your show here that yeah. you do, Dave, every two weeks that that will keep touching upon it and uh, informing people right. and getting people to help and reaching out because as soon as you reach out for people to help, people will come and help you, especially former idols and heroes yeah. of theirs. Yeah, and I think when you listen to Jeff there, it's such a worthwhile cause, you know, if, if you can help, you should help. Yeah, and talking of uh, worthwhile causes, the Albion, blimey, looking for a new manager. <laughs> Do you fancy the job, boys? Uh, definitely not. I think there's too much pressure on it now, but uh, yeah, with Pulis gone and, and Gary Megson taking over, they're looking for a new manager. What happens, though, in football is we keep regurgitating the same managers that fail season in, season out, give them a job, then they fail, and we seem shocked and surprised. Why do we keep doing it? it well, we were talking about it on the way and in the car. It's like an old boys yeah. club. I mean, uh, Pulis has gone. Now they're saying, you know, Cooman would be great for that job. I think, well, why Koeman? <laughs> just, he spent 160 million, just got the sack from Everton. <laughs> and then they're saying, well, you know, Everton... Tyler made for Slavin Bilic. He's just got the sack from West Ham. And uh, saying Pulis, well, he'll walk into the Wales job. Maybe Swansea, maybe Southampton, if they pull the trigger. And you think, well, all three of them, no disrespect, I don't know any of them, and they're, they're probably all good managers yeah. in their own right, but they've all just failed at the three jobs they've been at. Mm -hmm. And they will, if they want to, walk into another job within weeks, you would see. Mm -hmm. And then you look down the leagues, and I know I've mentioned it before in the past, but people like Walder and Hecky, people... Hecky Hecky Bottom, Hecky Hecky Bottom, yeah. you know, On a shoestring budget as yeah, well, isn't it, that but, they've done? The, 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 the thing that the powers that be real have, well, no premiership experience. How do you get it? Unless you give them a job in the premiership, yeah. how do you get that experience? They're never going to get that. But like again, says. it's about playing a, a certain way and with a certain style, isn't it? You know, you get this old chestnut. And again, it's another football urban myth. Tony Pulis has never been relegated. OK, he hasn't. But if he'd have stayed at the Albion, it would have been the first time for him. Oh, it looks that way, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, it does. It, you know, it's it's a good record and everybody brings it up. And in fairness yeah. to him, when he went in at Palace, he did, you know, he did save them. But I was listening to uh, an Albion fan talk the other day and he says, 
you half accept what Pulis yeah. does if you're getting results. Mm. He said it's absolutely torture to watch, but if you're nicking a 1-0 or you're getting a draw out of it in your mid-table, you take it. Mm. If you're going down there and you're getting beat every week and you're still watching and it's dire, that's when it becomes yeah. really hard work. That's when the fans can ask for his head. Which well, that's 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 when the, but he's done that 20 years, Tony. Yeah. He's always kept a tight ship, always to 60, 65 minutes, nicked a goal and then sat back again. But again, how boring, I mean, you're both forwards, how boring is it playing for a manager like that? I would be pulling my hair out, I really would. Do you know what I mean? Being defensive. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. not getting the ball up front and, and going down the sides and things like that, which they don't do. Uh, mm. It's frustrating for a striker. I think as a forward playing in, in the Albion team this season, it, you're, on a, you're on to a loser. Yeah, you are. The ball very rarely comes up to you with any quality. Mm. It's getting smashed up and they say, well, he's only scored that one goal, he's only scored two. How much quality are they getting? How mm. many crosses are they getting? And how many little through balls? Because they just defend, defend, defend. Uh, and like Orr says, that's the purest way, but it must be an hard job to play up front for Albion at the minute. But again, football is a confidence game, isn't it? I mean, life is confidence. Without confidence, you can't get out of bed. But if you're a forward and you're absolutely getting nothing, you're getting no chances, how mentally, how does that get in? How does that affect you? Because then they'll go, Orsfield, he ain't scored a goal in five games. Yeah, but he ain't had no bloody chances in five games. So you're getting aggravation for something you can't really challenge. And I think it's frustrating. Yeah. As a striker, me personally, yeah. as a striker, if I'm not getting it, like Dev says, me and Dev's used to argue left, right and centre. If he won't cross in the ball for me to score a goal, then I were, I were after him. Do you know what I mean? I was saying, mm -hmm. come on, get the ball in and things like that. But it's frustrating and, and that's when you start getting your yellow cards, you start getting sent off mm -hmm. in that kind of mentality and, and it's disappointing for West Brom. I don't remember you ever saying it to me that politely. Or, <laughs> come on, Dev. There are a few swear <laughs> words, yeah. that ball in, please, Dev. Uh, no, but yeah, yeah. Forwards thrive on chances, and yeah. and at the end of the day, ultimately, forwards are judged on goals. Now, mm. he might be working; he's not soft running the line, battling down, closing down, and really working hard. But people mm. are looking and saying, "Well, he's not scored for five games," mm. and that sort of uh, might mask the fact that he's not getting any chances. He's working yeah. his row out for yeah. the team, but he hasn't scored a goal. I mean, that's why forwards get the most money because mm. the most difficult job in football is to score goals. Without a doubt, mm. it should be the easiest thing, isn't it? It is. You're yeah. in that box yep. and it should yeah. be easy to score, but it's not. Jeff, why do central forwards um, or attacking midfield players, why do sometimes they don't take penalties when fullbacks or centre halves do? Because we've got no balls as strikers. <laughs> <laughs> I never, to be but, fair, I never did. I, yeah. I just, I don't know why. I think you took a few devs, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I used to yeah. take them regularly. Yeah. He'll, he'll throw the playoff final one in. Oh, there. I'm just waiting for you to. No, but I, I don't know why I didn't. I just never did. They always seemed to be a penalty taker in the side when I when I moved to them. So I just. Plus, I'd, I'd have most probably missed. Because, again, to be fair, like you're saying, <laughs> Dave, it's the hardest thing in the, to score the goal, but you've actually got a free kick at that goal, you and the goalkeeper, from 12 yards. Surely that's an easiest chance for you to score a goal than, than when you're in open play. And, again, going back to confidence, I think if you're a West Brom yeah. striker and you, you're you not having shots and you're not getting the service, mm -hmm. then your confidence is not going to be there. Yeah. Come on, we've got a couple of questions. What have we got from the floor? Steve Crawford said a couple of times, uh, bringing the transfer window for managers, it's the only way to stop the management. What do you reckon? Well, I, I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's an idea. Uh, the one thing that managers at the top level don't get now is time. So yeah. I, I don't think chairman at, at Stanford say, right, you've got to employ someone, you've got to give them X amount of time. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's a thought. I think the lower levels, I think it's less than 12 months a manager being in a job. I think yeah. Seven months. Is it seven months? Crazy, seven isn't it? months. Crazy. That's, not even, that's just over half a year. Yeah. So how can you get into yeah. a club, put your stamp on it, mm. put your kind of play on it, and how, how, where, however you play in your system, how can you do that in seven months? Now it's you impossible. had a, a role at Port Vale, didn't you? You yep. were in management at Port yep. Vale. How did that go? Not very well, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Mickey Adams left a good chef United, uh, to be honest, and took experience. I was just going through my badges at the time. Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, we took over, me and Mark Grew took over. His first game were Rotherham. They were second in the league. I think we were fifth. First game, seven minutes, sending off keeper. 40 minutes, centre-half got sent off. So we're down to nine men away. Uh, ended up getting beat 5-0. And they employed somebody called Jim Gannon, which uh, I didn't really get on with. And we've uh, not got on for a couple of months. He's made a few lies about me and, and made stories up that I'd not turned up for training. Don't forget, I've been assistant manager to yeah. him. Uh, so... We got on the bus, and I think it's been uh, documented, they call the bus gate story. I've uh, questioned him and, and spoke to him about it, and uh, he's obviously denied the allegations that's gone on with the chairman, so I've gave him a bit of a dig on the coach. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and that so was it. it went, so I just, do you know something? I fell out of love with football management, that side and coaching, and it just wasn't for me. I tried it, wasn't for me. Do you think it could be again, though, for you, Jeff? Definitely not. I'm, I'm no. that... I'm that passionate about what I'm doing, helping yeah. homeless people and, and what I'm doing now. I, I'd never, ever get back into football. Which is which great. Is a, which is a shame. Yeah. But I'm, hel I'm, I'm helping somebody else yeah. and, and a different different kind of thing that I'm doing. So, uh, no, I don't think I'll ever do it. Again, which is great. But I just think that you need more professional, former professional players yeah. in the game because the recruitment of people that, that buy football clubs, give jobs to people and then recruit in football seems to leave a lot to be desired and I think that's where one of the problems in football lies people that haven't got a clue what they're doing in football I think it is and I think if you look at Birmingham me and him are, I'm, I'm from Barnsley but yeah. I've got blue blood and as you know and he's a mad mad blues fan and I, as I am uh, but we'd show passion and really would mm. do you know what I mean it might never work for us yeah but we'd, we'd wear that out on a sleeve and I think that's one of the most important ingredients in football isn't it passion because when you guys played you we knew that uh, okay you're playing against the better teams we're not might not get the result but we knew that you would put a shift in and you'd run through a brick wall for us and that means a lot to football fans what else you got chris uh, our friend paul smith he says a uh, problem nowadays it's not a football club it's a business and with it results determine longevity of any managers gone are the days of the manager is the main man. Well, to be that fair, I mean, if I owned a football club, bollocks to all this business shite, it's a football club and it's a passion, yep. and I'd give me manager time, and I think that you need to have, I don't know, at least a couple of seasons to yep. stamp your, you know, your personality into that group of players. I think them days, especially at the top level, are gone. They're uh, gone, yeah. People don't want to wait. The days of bringing players through and developing yeah. and giving them a couple of years, they're gone uh, at the top level. You want instant success. Mm. You know, you look Fergie, 20 years, Wenger. I don't think you'll ever see no, that e no. ever again where they have total autonomy at the club and mm. they, they say transfers this and that. You know, a, a lot of the foreign coaches don't mind working with people that bring in players mm. and they, there's your players. The British space managers don't like doing that so much, but it is a business now. The Holy Grail is getting that money, the, the pot of gold in, in the Premiership. Everything's geared towards that. Uh, too many advisors on this, too many advisors on mm. that, and you know how much of us, how much total side does the manager actually have at these clubs now? At, at a lot of the clubs, even at yeah. Championship. I, level. I don't think he does. I think yeah. he's like head of recruitment. What is the head of coaching? Yeah. Assistant yeah. head of European coaching. European scouts. <laughs> but when did that change? Because could you imagine Cluffy, Shankly, Busby, Ferguson? The club has said mm. we're bringing in a man who's going to be the director of football. You'd have a war. Well, here's a Wouldn't question you? back to you, Gab. If Fergie was being employed now and he went four or five years as he did without winning anything, would he mm. still be in the manual? No. The answer is no. no. no so I think, I, think, I think the advent of the Premier League and as time's gone on, and, and especially the last 10 years mm. where the money has just got it's ridiculous, gone ridiculous, I think that's, that's when you're seeing that sort yeah. of change now. Now, talking about managers and someone that brought you in, because you get a lot of fans. We was listening to um, that West Ham fan oh, yeah. on about Moyes. Yeah. And, you know, he's having Ray Winstone and his assistant. Is this the... We'll have Jasper Carrington. We'll have Jasper. <laughs> you know, and it's like football, you know, the best managers, the most successful managers, have never visited the city, probably, or certainly have never played for that team. So why do you need somebody that knows the fans, knows the club, or has been a former great of that football club? Let's take Trevor Francis. For both of you, you didn't have the best of times with Trevor, did you? Well, I don't think you do need someone like that. I mean, Trevor's from Plymouth. Well, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. And I was with, but he'd come with, as a 16 year old boy, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, you know, Sh Shankly and people like that, they weren't from Liverpool. No. Um, so I don't think you do. You know, a good manager. Look at Mourinho. Mm -hmm. He won titles in Spain, won titles in Italy, mm -hmm. won titles in. I think a good manager can manage any. He, he, need he to didn't play at the top level, did he? No. no. Mourinho. No. no. But again, what makes that good manager? The motivation. I think it's it's man management. Yeah. Now, I think Trevor, what was he like with you? As a man manager, he wasn't very good. Yeah. Now going back to Brucey, mm -hmm. totally different. Yeah. Brian Robson, totally different. Kevin Keegan, one of the best I've ever played under for mm -hmm. a man management. You speak. To any player that's played under him, and he made you feel ten feet tall. Yeah. He could even make devs feel <laughs> ten feet tall. <laughs> <a magician. laughs> but it's all about man management. Yeah. Brucey, like when Brucey come in from Trevor being there, if I were playing bad, I need a bollocking. Mm. I need somebody to slap me. Come on, you're not doing it. Trevor had said to me sometimes, "Oh, keep going. You're playing well." I know I won't play well. Yeah. And sometimes I needed a kick up the backside. Mm. And Brucey would give you that. Brian Robson, stroke Nigel Pearson would give you that. Yeah. So listen, you're not doing it. You're off. Mm. And you know what's happening? You're not going to get. You're not going to play next game. I needed that. I knew when I come in 
at Birmingham that he was going to play me all the time because I was a record signing at the time. Yeah. So I knew, I got maybe got a little bit complacent, which I shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. I did get me injury early doors for Birmingham, but you, sometimes you need a different kind of man manager. Mm. When you're injured, what happens? I mean, you went out on the piss, <clears> didn't you? I did. I, I were. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I, got, <laughs> you, I think well, you weren't with me that time, were you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd got injured at a. I'd got a blood clot in my leg, so I'd been off about four or five weeks. And when you're injured, devs will tell you it's like nine o'clock till five o'clock. Yeah. You're in morning sessions, afternoon sessions, swimming. And after five weeks, I'd been in with John Price and I've, I've been in every day, Saturday, Sunday. And the boys were going to, I think it was Plymouth or somewhere down south on the Friday. Mm -hmm. And I said to Price, I said, listen, Price, I, I ain't coming in. I said, uh, my head's gone. So I'm going to go for a few beers at Broad Street, which at this time Broad Street were bouncing. I said, I'll see you Monday morning. And he said, oh no, you've got to come in Sunday. I said, listen, I'm going out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I said, I'll be in Monday. I said, I'll be fit. For the, Only three days. For the, for the Saturday <laughs> after. And uh, Price, he said, oh, he's going to find you. So I got in the Monday morning, Trevor come in and he's, uh, he said to me, he said, listen, you may record signing. He said, I'm going to have to find you two weeks wages. I said, Trevor, you're not finding me two weeks wages. He went, all right, a week. He went, no, no, no. He said, uh, 500 pound. I ended up settling on 50 quid and a bottle of red wine. <laughs> and I went on, on AWOL for three days. Now, if I would have never done that to Brucey. No. I'd have never known. I'd have never got away with it. And I, mm. I'd have, I think I'd have respected him more. Yeah. Brucey and, and Kevin Keegan. Did you lose respect for Trevor in that instant? I think I lost a lot of respect for Trevor, the Preston game, mm. when we got beat on penalties and he took us off, if yeah, you remember. I do, yeah, what happened? He took us off. We were supposed to, we tossed up before the game and if he went to penalties, we were going to take it behind the open end at Deepdale, yeah. which it were all being developed, yeah. if you remember. Yeah, I do, yeah. And the referee, because of the police, had to change it, so the police told him to change it. Got you. And he come on and said, no, I'm not having it. Had a little bit, threw his teddies out of the pram. He went and sat in the dugout. And he went and sat in the dugout and took us off. And all, all right. the going, oh, what are we doing? Oh, my God. And I think that's that lost us it. That lost us that semi-final on the penalties. So I think I lost a little bit of respect for him. I, th I, th I think what I would say is spot on. I mean, me and him are similar sort of characters. Mm -hmm. We needed a, a boot up the backside. Yeah. And, you know, that's where... Warnock was great with me with that, and obviously Bruce. So they knew the players that they had to put their arm around. They mm. knew with me and him it was a, a, a kick up the arse. They knew at times that we'd uh, we'd probably be a little bit of a handful in you know moaning or going out maybe over a weekend mm. and having one too many. But they, mm. they ultimately all knew at the end of the week that they could rely on us. Mm. You know, we'd put a shift in. We never did it uh, at the wrong times. No. You know, never Definitely. drank two days before a game. You know, it's, you know we always done it right, but. We socialised together, yeah. we played together, and we were pals. And mm. I think, you know, the John O as well and, and, and other people. But I think that's gone out of the game. I think yeah. that, that team spirit and that, you know, your comradeship, that don't seem to be there anymore. Mm. And it, he'll tell you the same, that the promotion team, great team to play yeah. in us, because yeah. proper men in the team. And we all, I know we touch on about it, but, it, you know, it was a great We'd all back but, each other as well. But, Do you know what I mean? You know, we, it was we, if we, team we spirit. Knew, yeah, we knew if we were in a fight, and it happened sometimes, mm. didn't it, in tunnels and all that, mm. it won't just be one or two of us. It'd be 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 mm. of us all backing each other up. Mm. And it, and that's what it's like. And, and like you say, it's not all about going out and getting pissed and getting drunk, but some players don't say things in changing rooms. Yeah. Me and him were always vocal saying, you do this, do that, yeah. do that. Quite a few are not like that. They'd sit there mm. and just not Let say a word. Show. And then if they have a beer, obviously it's the Dutch courage, and they say, well, you should yeah. have done that, you should have done that. And things get ironed out. Yeah, they really yeah. do, don't they? Clearly, yeah, yeah. Mm. And it happens. Christmas time. <clears throat> I mean, another few weeks, you've got the Christmas mm. fixtures. You always get the footballer coming in. Cause, I mean, Boxing Day fixtures. Mm. Uh, everyone's playing up and down the country, yeah. Boxing Day. Christmas Day, in for training. What's all that about? Do you need to, or would you be better off spending the day with your kids, opening your Christmas presents, forget training, and then join up with the, with the lads and play what I would have in a Christmas fixture list, a local derby, all Christmas games will be local derbies and you can spend it with your family because you wouldn't go out and get absolutely rat arsed yeah. during the season. You're a professional mm. football player and if you're treated like men and given that respect, I'm sure that you give it back as well. Well, well I think historically it used to be probably the busiest period, didn't yeah, it, over did, Christmas yeah. and New Year. I, I agree with you totally. Should always be local derbies. I know Celtic and Rangers for years, yeah. New, New Year's Day was always the derby. But yeah, I, 
Listen, for Christmas for me for 15 years was a write-off because we was in every day, so I got in mm. the habit of not really bothering. You'd have your Christmas, you know, you get up, you open the presents with the kids and then you'd be off to training. And to be honest, it never bothered me because I thought once you've opened the presents with the kids, mm. it was pretty boring anyway <laughs> the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. And I think what managers do, I think they edge their bets. Well, we know you're not going to eat too much. Or I don't know any lads that went out at Christmas and no. would have a drink Christmas no. day. I don't know any of them. Yeah. So I think it is just to keep you ticking over. It never bothered me, to be perfectly yeah. honest. What I, the one thing that I did, I remember two two home Christmases in a row. Brucey put us in a hotel when we were at home. Yeah. So I, was, I, I didn't like that, you know, being in yeah. a hotel on Christmas Eve and then Christmas mm -hmm. training, Christmas Day. But... The managers obviously don't trust the players. Mm. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's what it's back to. It's down to trust. Yeah, he'd he, he trust a certain amount, mm -hmm. but he'd not trust some. Mm. Most probably never trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but when we were at Fulham, Alfie did something different, which he could with money. When we, I don't know if I've ever told mm. you this, Deb, but we, there were me, Paul Bracewell, Kevin Keegan, and Lee Clark, all yeah. from up north, and Steve Haywood, who were based in Birmingham. Now he paid, I think it was twenty-four grand, got his helicopter to go all the way up to Newcastle. Blimey. All the way back down to Birmingham, all the way down to Fulham, so we could spend an extra four hours with uh, Fair play. As, as kids yeah. on Christmas Day, which were a fantastic uh, mm. gesture. But he's got the money to do it, hasn't he? Yeah, well, that's very true. <laughs> Talking about um, helicopters, reality TV shows, would you guys fancy going in the jungle? I, I won't mind it to be. I won't, I won't mind it to be fair. It's just jumping out of the uh, the airplane. I won't be able to do. I do everything else. I'd eat yeah. anything. Yeah, anything. <laughs> the only thing about them, I'm petrified of spiders. Anything really? else, rats, snakes. Yeah. That, oh, I'm terrified of spiders. <laughs> You're eating everything. I don't know what I've eaten. Some of the curries I've had down the years. I dare say there's worse things in there. But yeah, yeah, I'd have a go. Q and A's as well, lads. Yeah. Are you are you doing any these days? Yeah, we've done a lot. We just want to mention we were meant to be yeah. at the King's Oak last Thursday, uh, but mm -hmm. we couldn't go. I think they're going to try and rearrange it. Obviously, the horse wasn't very well. So if anyone from the the King's Oak and King's Norton's listening, uh, we will be rescheduling yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, we've done it. We've done loads down. We, we enjoy them, don't we? Yeah, it's we good, have a good and laugh. you yeah, know, it's uh, laugh. it's a bit raw, and the, the language is a bit uh, <laughs> raw, and, and we tell the stories that we can't really tell yeah. when the, when there's kids listening. But you know, it's it's an insight into. What it was when we were players, really, and uh, which and, has changed totally yeah, now, which it? is completely different. And it's like this: it, it's it's no holds barred, and we take questions from the audience, and we answer it. And it don't need to be about football; we answer questions on everything. Let's have a Q and A anecdote here from okay. uh, one from Dev, one from the horse. Uh, Q and A, right? And about the plane, we always get always get asked about Dugary, don't we? Mm. Always get asked yeah. about Dugary. So I remember um, Charlton away, going back to you know working hard yeah, up front, yeah. and it. it Brucey left me and Stan Lazaridis out, so he said, I'm leaving, not playing with two wings today, playing with, I don't know if it was in midfield, it was Jeff and, Jeff and Dugary up front. So me and Stan are watching the game, and Orse is running everywhere, he's battering centre-halves, and he's, his elbow is winning headers, and Christoph, honestly, I don't think he got above a jog for 60 minutes. <laughs> right, then after about 65 minutes, ball's been played up to Christoph, and he's done this flick, and it's gone, you know, it was a good flick, and it looked good, and the air was flowing in the end, and Brucey's turned around, he's gone, oh, the man's a magician. The man's a magician. So me and Stan started lost. It's, it's been awful for 70 minutes. Yeah. So then the ball about seven minutes later has come up to Jeff. He's tried to do the same flick and fell over or tripped over. <laughs> Bruce has turned round. He's, bear in mind, he'd been like Rambo for an hour. He slammed the bottle on the floor. He's gone, who does he think he's the... Effing Barnsley bricklayer. <laughs> I mean, and Stan, we was in hysterics because he'd been outstanding yeah. for an hour. Christoph hadn't tried it. I think we, he? he scored yeah. that day. Yeah, he did. I think yeah. they both ended we both up scored. scoring and we, and we won 2-0. But that was, that, that, you know, that's one of the cleaner things I can tell on him. Mind you, that goal that Dugary did score that goal was a wonderful goal. General it was one in flicks, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. He'd got that in his locker to be yeah. fair, and he, he would. Yeah, I mean, ability. He was just lazy. Yeah. How yeah. frustrating, though, Jeff, was it playing with <laughs> a player like Do Gary up front, where you're doing all the donkey work and he's getting all. I know, know he got all the accolades right? and all that, but I didn't mind it. That was my job at yeah. any day. I was like a battering ram. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I was never quick. I'd never got all the skills he'd got. And if you looked at him, he'd won the World Cup, the European Championship, mm -hmm. played for Barcelona. And when he'd yeah. come in, like Dev said, he's got his flowing locks, his jeans on, and he, he would just. He would just Swire Frenchman won it, and he, was, he, he, he were a nice kid as well. Yeah. And I mean, he won't flash with it. Mm -hmm. He won't big headed. He just, he just knew he were good. Yeah. Simple as that. <laughs> he just got when he walked into the room, he got an aura about him, mm -hmm. a proper aura. But playing with him, I enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah, I used to have to do quite a lot of running and flick ons and everything like that. But we complemented each other really well. But I, I did enjoy it. 
I did enjoy it. And Kieran, I from uh, from you, Jeff. What what's the the most common question that fans ask you? I'm guessing this one. I'm guessing Karen Bryden. I think that's been a, I asked a few. That's the first five questions. Now, but when we when we played the Villa, uh, we played them away the second game when we yeah. won two nil, and I went in goal, ended up going in goal, and. After we've come off and Dion Dublin's waiting for Sav at the top of the stairs and he wanting to kick ten bells and shit really? out of him. Yeah. Well he got him sent off, done he, with a little yeah, nut yeah. and all that. And then we obviously we're all buzzing, we'd beat him second time, uh got three points and we sat in the changing room. Me and him always change next to each other and we just sat there and we're thinking, you know, we're gonna have a good night here. <laughs> and Bruce he's like gone round, he said, Brilliant lads, well done, what all this and he's looked at me and Debs and just gone. Don't you two be going out in town tonight? <laughs> about what time do we get in? About seven o'clock. Well, we're in, we're in the meerkat oh. dancing on the pool table naked. <laughs> 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 so we had a good night. We had a good night. But you loved it, didn't you? But he, he knew. He knew. And then we got yeah. in. I think that were a Monday game, wasn't it? We got in on the Wednesday yeah. or something. We went, oh, good night, lads. He knew we'd gone out. Yeah. And yeah. because he'd heard it, somebody had rang him or whatever. Mm. We had never hardly got into trouble. We had a beer, loved a beer. Uh, and he knew that on that Saturday hmm. we'd perform for him. And the again. thing about it is, when we train, you know, we train hard. Oh, we train hard. You know, we'd run play hard. Uh, you know, I remember. Yeah. Do you remember when Alou Susu came in the one day and, and Alou wouldn't try a leg? No, just no, not and at Bruce all. And Bruce said, "Don't go on." He knew with me and him that we'd come in, we'd train hard, and we'd play hard. Hmm. And, and, in, and in fairness, ninety-nine percent of the time, we'd, yeah. you know, we, we never had any cross words. We, you know, Warn never. Warn never. was great with stuff like that as well with all the players. Um, when I played for Sheffield, we had we, we had about four or five of us from Birmingham, and he'd always say, "I was used to driving with David Kelly, you yeah. know, ex Wolves, uh, Leicester, and everything, Ian Hamilton, the Pesh people, like that. and he'd say, uh, right, you lads in your thirties, have Monday off, mm. uh, you know, just little things like mm. that with the older yeah, players, yeah. Yeah. or go go for a game of squash on Monday, and because he knew it'd be right." Maybe they'd be knackered on the Monday, give them mm. an extra bit of time. And I think it's little things like that. And all City I need with man management, how you deal with players, yeah. how you get the most out of them. And Villa goalkeepers got to touch upon that. <laughs> <laughs> what is it when Villa goalkeepers played against Birmingham? They bottled it. Because Enkelman at Villa Park done it with you, didn't he? He dropped the ball for you yeah, when you went well, around the first, scored. Obviously, the first game, it went under his foot. Yeah, exactly, Which we don't yeah. know if it touched or not, did we? we, we I don't think you, he did. I don't we, you He don't chased know. it, though, didn't he? That was I don't his, think he did. It was his reaction, yeah. reaction to yeah. put his hand yeah, he on his head. Me to the back of the if he had just run to the referee, the referee yeah, yeah. most probably, oh, he hadn't touched it. He mm -hmm. must probably not give a goal. But we'd gone 1-0 up anyway. But the second one, yeah, uh, I would think it would have been 70-30 to him. But... He just didn't fancy it. No. He didn't fancy it, me running at him. And I think the game's after as well. I think Sorensen dropped yeah, did, a goal. Yeah. Sorensen dropped it's a goal. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed to be the first four or five games yeah. once we got promoted that the, 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 whoever was in goal for the Villa dropped a clank yeah. in, all yeah. the, in all those games. We had yeah. the Indian sign over yeah, there. Yeah, we did for a year or two. Yeah. But again, that was the way that Birmingham was set up. He, mm. broke, he, he broke his up too early, didn't he, really, Bruce? Like, yeah, and I think... He, you know, he always said that, didn't he? He always said that. When I when I went to Wigan, then West Brom, and I were in Tunnel... Uh, we played him at the Hawthorne and got beat 3-2 uh, and I'd scored two but I said I'm going to smash you today Brucey obviously manager of Birmingham like, mm. and he said I broke you lot up too early and after the game he come and spot to me got rid of them me and Debs then Benno mm. Grange got injured and all yeah, they were Grange injured but like all the lads the, the lads John O the lads that got him up yeah, he, he broke up way too too soon and got the big players in on the big door that I don't think Mm. warranted to, to wear that shirt half of the time. Because at that time, that's what was happening, morning. You get a team out of the Championship, you get another team in the Premier League. Mm. But if you look at the last few years with Watford, with, with Burnley, with Huddersfield, with Brighton, you've had teams that have come up and largely yep. kept the same group of players, added one yep. or two, and integrated a couple of them into the team, and they're doing well in the Premier League. I think that's what you've got to do. Whole, yeah. it's, it's hard to make seven or eight changes, mm. I think, and keep that, mm. keep that identity you've got. Where Bruce had done great that first year or two, he brought in like Kenny Cunningham and Matty yeah. Upson. Good, good yeah. players, and proper he, good players. Yeah, too. and then obviously Sav come a little bit Clem later. As well, didn't Clem. Clem. Mm. So he sort of done it nice and then it got to a point where, you know, you had Heskey, is it? Yeah. Gronky or Melchior. Yeah. And that's when it sort of fell apart a little mm. bit, I thought. From the outside look, obviously I'd gone by then from the outside looking in. Mm. If you look at Wolves this season, I think they'll do well in they'll go up this season. They'll go up this On the nice day well they've done. Yeah. But they'll they'll be able to hold themselves in the Premier League. Yeah. What I've seen of them. Yeah, yeah, they've yeah. got Premier League players. Well, I know they've spent the money. But yeah. got Premier well, League I players. keep waiting for the bubble to burst because you keep thinking, well, yeah. in the depths of winter, which we're near well, enough the in Portuguese. Yeah, well, yeah, the pitches, yeah. are, a bit, a bit, pitches yeah. are a bit heavy. Are they going to fancy it? But they, they keep winning. So, you know, you'd have to say their favourites to go up at the moment. But again, Wolves and Watford. I mean, Watford keep changing managers. They keep yeah. bringing in players. Yeah. But they still maintain that level of success and play decent football as well. It's amazing mm. the model that they've got down. And obviously, I had yeah. two or three years mm. at Watford, and, and they do seem to change the manager every 
year mm. or every 18 months and and it's working for yeah. them you know you look and you think well that that can't be right i mean <laughs> it looks like they're going to lose the manager again now through no fault of their own because yeah. i think he'll end up at everton the way the yeah. way it's going but yeah i mean they've done and i watched them the weekend and i i know it was only two nil but i I think West Ham only had 2% possession in, mm. in, in Watford's half. They absolutely battered West Ham. And they could finish top 10 this year, Watford. And it's great to see, isn't it? Yeah. And it's yeah. great to see, well, seeing sides clubs, like, clubs that like that come yeah. up and proving yeah. that you can. Because, and being stable in the Premier League. Because it's like FA Cups as well. Why do they then, these teams that are never going to win the Championship, well, in old money, the Premier League, why do they make all these bloody changes to cup competitions? Well, the perfect example of that is, is Spurs at the moment. Yeah. Everyone's the best Spurs team and Ali and Kane mm. and Pochettino is the best. He hasn't won anything. No. Why not go and try and win the League Cup or the FA yeah. Cup? Yeah. So it's, it's a trophy at the end of the day. The fans want that, don't they? Because and you do as well as the player does. I, do. I can't yeah. see him winning the league. I can't see past Man City or maybe Man U this season. So I don't think Spurs are going to win the league. So why not get a trophy under? Give them fans a day out at Wembley. I know they're at Wembley every week anyway, but give them a day out, something to remember. I'll tell you something now. There's more chance of SRB being radio station of the year than another team apart from Man City winning the Premier League. Yeah. It ain't going to happen. No. Yeah, it looks that way. Too and again, them. Cups, you want to win something. As a player, What's you finish it. I've won the League Cup, I've won the FA Cup, I've won whatever. Yeah. I've gone up in Scotland, I've played in Portugal, I've won things. That's what you're in the game to do, to win. You want to be a winner, don't you? Sure. You don't want to like FA Cup and Brucey or whoever it is comes, by the way, lads, I'm playing the reserves today. Bollocks to that. Oh, I want to play the FA Cup. Yeah. It's the greatest cup competition in the world. Why do you keep making all these bloody changes? It's ridiculous. And as a player, surely to God you'd rather play two games a week than sit on a bench and oh, do more training. Oh, listen, it's man. daft, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it, it, it training. He'll tell you the yeah. same. You yeah. love it when it's a Saturday Tuesday because yeah. you're yeah. doing nothing in training. Yeah. And especially if you're playing well and as a forward horse, if you've yeah. scored a few goals, mm -hmm. you'd pl you'd, you want to mm -hmm. play Saturday Tuesday, Saturday mm -hmm. Tuesday. What you do? You know, all this that you need a rest is a myth. It's a big yeah. myth. Blues versus Wolves coming up soon. Night game. Why? <laughs> do you know? I, I mean, why? I don't know. I think they're just obviously thinking about trouble, aren't they? No, I think game. so. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous to play Birmingham City versus Wolves or Birmingham v Villa. Yeah. Probably not so much the Albion, but there's a lot of tension, isn't there? No, it's between the Yam Yams yeah. and the Zulus. Yeah, of yeah. course it is. And let's be honest, it's a recipe for a row of course that it is. night. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a televised game as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, again, it's going back to money. Yeah, yeah and they'll be on the viewings. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And viewings. It's a strange one, definitely. Yeah. But I always preferred night games, to be honest. As a player, you want to play. Yeah, you do, game. yeah. I mean, what is the difference between I don't, that? Just, I, I don't know if it's the atmosphere or what, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always felt physically better over a night mm -hmm. game as well, which sounds daft to say when you kick off at three o'clock of a Saturday, yeah. but... I always enjoyed night games better. I mean, my, first, my funnily enough, my first night game for mm. Blues under Baz was Wolves. Yeah. And that was my first two goals. We won 2-0. So I always enjoyed the oh, night... Why? No, at St Andrews. Okay, yeah. I always enjoyed the night games better, especially yeah. at St Andrews. And I think that night that I'm going back to in about 95, 96 was full house at St Andrews. Yeah. And there's nothing better than a night that game That makes there. a difference as well. Yeah. Like yeah. This, yeah. So full house at St Andrews mm. on a night game, mm. floodlights. Yeah. Always sounds better. Now at Wolves, you scored in front of South Bank as well, didn't you? Yeah, I was I was fortunate down the years. I think every yeah. club that I played for, I always scored against the Wolves. So I had a I had a good record. I, I think that first season where I scored two at home and two away. Yeah. I think bully bully Nick two at uh, and we lost three two. I think away. But yeah, I, you know, I always enjoyed playing against the Wolves. You know. Bloody oh, hell. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. So professional. I thought it was off. <laughs> uh, and me and us put ours on silent as well. I can't believe it. No, it's... Uh, Bit of dip. They're a, they're a big club, Wolves, you know. Big club, sleeping joint, yeah. you can say. You know, I know that's mentioned a lot, as same as Blues are, but always a lot playing against them. But again, from an away supporter, I mean, one of my best mates is a uh, Wolves season ticket yep. holder. He used to uh, do editor of, of Load of Ball, and he said... I used to hate that bastard Devlin. <laughs> right? I used to, we'd give him aggravation for 90 minutes. Aggravation, we hated him. And then he'd score in front of the South Bank and he'd do that. <laughs> and we knew, we knew that if you got a team full of Devlins, mm. you couldn't intimidate Birmingham City. Totally agree, and yeah. as much as we'd give it, we respected him as much and more than any other player because he wasn't blessed with a, an abundance of skill. How dare he? <laughs> But, Spot on there. Yeah, <laughs> but, but absolutely loved by fans that should hate you. And I think that, for me, I said to him, I'll tell Dave that, because I think that's one of the, the, the greatest accolades that you can give a, a player. Of course, it's from an away sport. It is, isn't it? Yeah, Seriously. Definitely. definitely. 
you know. Yeah. And I did have my quickest ever sending off at Molyneux as well, <laughs> six minutes. And it was the first. It was the first day that me. Uh, my wife's dad come to see me, so he was late getting in the ground because my dad had took him to a pub by the ground, by the Wolves ground. So yeah. he said he was just making his way to his seat, sitting down. So he sat down, looked up, and I was walking off. <laughs> so my dad got straight back up and went back to the well, pub. against Muscat? No, it was against uh, Mo Kamara, six oh, minutes. Mo Kamara. Yeah. Now, when we're playing Wolves, you're doing a, a gig, aren't you? There's something going on. Is it a, a quiz that you're, that yeah, you're well, involved 29. in? Yeah, on, the, on the Wednesday 29th, the 29th, it, oh, okay. it's, it's me and Horse and some yeah. Blues fans. Uh, it's a, it's a, a fundraiser at, at St Andrews against Don Goodman, Steve Bull uh, and some Wolves fans. And I've told Horse, if we lose in a quiz to Bully, <laughs> Goodman and a load of Wolves fans, uh, I'm never showing my face again. <laughs> What's the quiz going to be about? Is it about football, general knowledge? Do you know something? I don't know, but I think, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I think there's some general knowledge. I'm hoping yeah. it's about bricklaying or something. Or, or <laughs> some me out. Bit of building. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if, it, if it's general knowledge, we're knackered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or Barnsley. Yeah, yeah. Barnsley. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I don't know, is it? It'll be a good laugh. It'll be a good laugh. Good laugh. Mm. Raising money again for yeah. different causes. So. And what we're, charity we're is that going I'm to? I'm not sure. It's, it, the Blues have organised it. Yeah. I should know, really. should know, but um, I'm not sure. It, it's advertised on their website. and their it's, yeah, it's, not, it's, two or three. it's not just yeah. one charity, yeah, it's think, two uh, or three charities. Yeah. Children's Hospital is one. Which yeah, is good. That, I think yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, is it Chambers number five or the, the, the sponsor? They yeah, that's are, it. Yeah, they're, 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 uh, they're something yeah. to do. But I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good, be good. Be good. something different. Yeah, good luck. And yeah. obviously we'll get questions asked to us. And, yeah. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, like we said, me and Devs will win. Yeah, it'd be nice to beat Bully at Summit. Down the years, I think he had the Indian side we used to play against him. And, you know, just touching back on players from that day. Similar to Jeff Bullock, mm, yeah. you know, fantastic. Proper player. Yeah, yeah proper hard player. as nails. Um, you know, my good pal John, I've never seen him never seen him have a hard time, really, against a lot of mm. players. But Bully always used to seem to give him a hard time. And, you know, r rightly held as a legend in the Wolves' eyes. Great, great player. But do you not think there should be more players like that, Jeff, coming through in the in the modern game? Because at the end of the day, football hasn't changed that much, has it? It's still about you scoring a goal and you stopping a goal and creating something. <sighs> I think they're drilling it out of them. Yeah, I, I really do. Games. Academies don't want a Jeff Horsfield or a Steve Bull or a Paul Devlin. They all want people, six foot machines that can play football. Mm. And and it's that, like when you're doing your coaching badges, they asked me what what's, what's what the hardest thing to do, the mm. coaching badges. I went, talking in an aggressive manner. You can't talk in an aggressive manner. Why? Why are you doing coaching? I don't know. I've always had it through my career. I'm sure yeah. Debs has through yeah, non-league. Yeah. You, you fucking do this, you've yeah. got to do that. You can't do it. But that's a game. Can you it? please do that? Can you? Will you do? Will you do that? Not do that. Mm -hmm. You can't talk to people like that now. I think it's wrong. Do you think when you start setting out like that though, you're just sending out the wrong signals, I, I aren't think, you? I think. I'd love to see all these academy players when they get to 16, 17, go and play in the conference or go and play in mm -hmm. the Northern Premier. But they should, shouldn't they? Southern Premier. They should, yeah. Because yeah. half of them won't make it. Half of them won't get there. But it'd toughen them up, wouldn't it? Yeah, it does to me and him. You know, well, you know, well, me and him did the non-league scene, and yeah. you know, at 17, 18, you're playing with and against men yeah. who are gonna, and you, you either 24, you, 25 you're years old. Yeah. And yeah. I think what we do with our young players now, they're taught to do this, do that, and you can't speak to them like that, and you can't say this. Mm. When they get to a first team dressing room, yeah. also tell you it's oh. going to be a massive culture. It's brutal. Because, it's brutal. Because let me tell you, a first team manager is not going to say, "Excuse me, could you please do that for me?" And don't do that again. Don't pass across. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get spoke yeah. to in industrial language. Mm. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it can even get a bit physical. So, of course it can. you know, we're, we're showing them that way. But it, ultimately, if you want to be a professional footballer, or I suppose even a rugby player or anything. You know, you've got to you got to toughen up a little bit, innit? Mm. Yeah, of course you've. You got to want to win first and foremost. Yeah. Though you got to want to win, and everybody about. wants to win, don't they? Awesome. Well, some do, don't they? <laughs> We're talking about winning and scoring goals against your old clubs. How important is that? I mean, you said to Bruce in the tunnel, "I can have you, Gaffer." I, I think it is because I think once you leave a club, it yeah. depends what circumstance it's under. And obviously, I left Bert Blues because Mikel Forskell come in, mm -hmm. were a fantastic player, yeah, yeah. and Brucey just pulled me in the office and said, "He got him and Clinton Morrison mm -hmm. said to me, listen, you're not going to start any game this season.'" He said. Uh, what do you want to do? So it was more or less saying to me, you need to go. And I just went, well, I'm all 32 at the time, 31. I said, I ain't sitting on the bench. Gaffer, I said, no way am mm. I sitting on the bench picking my money up. I want to go and play. So Wigan, Nick Eden had gone to Wigan, knew Paul Jewell, spoke to him um, and went up there. Uh, but scoring against Blues, obviously I wanted to score against Blues just to say to Bruce, listen, this is what you're missing kind of thing. Mm. I know we didn't win the game, but it's always nice to score against your uh, your old team. 
listen, you don't go st stupid and celebrate, yeah. put your hand up or whatever you do, but it's always nice in, in back of your head, it's always nice to score. But again, when you score a goal, it's a great feeling, isn't it? Of course, it's the I, best I, feeling I, in the world, yeah. believe me. But I don't get why you're playing for a team, <clears throat> you might be a Blues fan, mm. but you've left Birmingham, because you ain't going to stay for life at a football club, you're at a club, you're doing a job, you give 100%, you go, you move somewhere else, yeah. you score against them, you score a goal, you want to celebrate? Why do. shouldn't you? Yeah. I, I agree with celebrating, not being stupid. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, but celebrating, yeah. I, I always used to put me on. I never thought of celebrations. So I just put my hand up, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but again, celebrations these days, they go over the top with these stupid sign language. <laughs> the, they must work for ages, <laughs> isn't it? Right? Yeah, yeah the it is. They must work for ages. Celebrate, you know, working out these celebrations. But yeah, I mean. I mean, to be fair, I can't remember anyone we played with who went over the top, really. No, we'd have gave them so much. Exactly. Yeah. We'd have absolutely yeah. battered them. Yeah. Yeah. And battered me, them, saying, what and are let, you doing? And let me tell you, just you, you touched on the, the jungle. If somebody we played with misses when in the jungle, <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me tell you, the stick that player would be getting <laughs> would be unmerciful. Yeah. Let, let me tell you that. But again, I mean, a, a player is misses. Mm. I mean, what the bloody hell is she going in the jungle for, anyhow? I mean, she's no, she's no celebrity. Yeah. I mean, if Jamie Vardy was going to go in the jungle, if yeah. it was the end of the season, yeah. you go, well, fair, fair enough, you're a football player. But I just don't get these non-celebrities, all these people that want to be celebrities. Well, apparently, Joey Barton turned down half a million. Yeah, I heard him on talks. But... He could leave me in there for 12 months for <laughs> half a million. No, <laughs> no food, nothing. But no, like you say, I mean, I didn't, I didn't recognise my... I don't watch the soaps. Mm. So I didn't recognise her to it. So Amir Khan, obviously, I love my boxing, so I know him. But yeah, it's not the uh, yeah. not the most stellar lineup. Are you Rose Jeff? Who did you uh, when you was a kid growing up? Who was the player? I would that... think when I first started getting in football, yeah. obviously born in '73. Uh, Ian Rush, it yeah. was Liverpool with the team then '80s, mm -hmm. 81s, '82. So Ian Rush, and later on in the in my career, Alan Shearer. Yeah, loved Alan Shearer. Loved everything where he was about his <coughs> every, his persona, everything. Mm. Any questions, Chris, from well, the uh, there's, there's from the box? Come on, let's <laughs> real um, through. I'll go through a couple anyway. Uh, Carl wants to know uh, if the horse is going for a carver this week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need the carver; just drink the beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Sean, a farmer, says it was a pleasure to captain the horse a couple of uh, seasons ago for um, at Football Aid. Uh, he had a few beers before the game and lasted nearly 15 minutes. That Luke, is that, that's, that, that's that, long for us these days. And Paul Ipkiss wants to know, is Cuts the man to take us forward? Is he your choice? Cuts, what, what do you think? He talks in riddles, don't he? I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be good or not. We're just going to have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, his pedigree down at Cheltenham on a, on a shoestring budget. I don't know how much money we've got to spend, but mm -hmm. time will tell. Time will tell. What do you reckon, Dev? It's an awkward one. You'd think after he's, you know, coming in and knowing the squad and keeping, yeah. Yeah, be, being a vital part in keeping us up this season would, would have stood him in good stead. But I think some of his team selections and some of his tactics mm -hmm. have been a bit strange. But like I've mentioned before on this show, the big thing that nobody knows is what goes yeah. on on the training ground. Yeah. Great result for us Saturday. Hard-fought win. Yeah. You know, we weren't the greatest of games. But when you look at the, the next three fixtures, Middlesbrough, Sheffield, Wolves, had to win that Snorters, game. Snorters, isn't they? Had to win that game. So, you know, credit to him, he, he got the three points in there because it's going to be hard to pick up anything from these next three games. What is this game out of the three? I think Middlesbrough. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah he's going to look at Middlesbrough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You're right down there. That's mine. That's oh, is that your It's a very Devlin phone. But again, Chef you, that's live on the box. That's going to be a game. Um, start of the day, Dev, will you be up there, Brown Lab? I am, yeah. I mean, in fairness to Chef you, I don't, yeah. I don't go back there often, but I've still got a great mate of mine, Paddy O'Sullivan, up there. So as soon as the fixtures come out, Chef you rang me and said, Would you like to come up for the game? So I mm. thought, Well, I'll make a bit of a day of that. Yeah. So unbeknownst to me, I've arranged to get up there at 11 o'clock and have a couple of beers, but they've changed it to an half 5 kick yeah. on. So, so my interview before the game, you might have to listen very, very carefully. But no, I'm going up, spending a night, you know, I love my time at Sheffield. Yeah. You know, great, very, very similar club to Blues in fan base, mm. attitude, everything. So I'm, I'm going up there, looking forward to it. I've spoke to Chris Walder, he's going to come and uh, meet me after the game, have a beer with me after the game. It should be great to see Chris play with him at Nuts County and Sheffield. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I think mm. it'll be a... A stiff test for Blues. I would, uh, I think they're well second in the league, aren't they? Confidence, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Confidence. Well, I like that lad Brooks. They're in yeah. that habit of winning. Yeah. They're in mm. that habit Sharp of winning. Sharp is going back to strikers. Yeah. Confidence. His school goals. I yeah. play with him at Sheffield and Scunny. Little striker that school goals all day long. Yeah. Mm. Again, confidence is the buzzword, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, you know the championship's such a difficult league. Yeah. 
Um, but you look at this month and you think, well, after this month, the fixtures have got to ease up a little bit because mm. you're going to be playing the first and second in the league. Middlesbrough, really I know they got beat the weekend, but you know they're up in the top six or seven. Uh, you know, if we can pick up a couple of points or maybe nick a win out of those three games, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be more than happy. But again, going back to when you're in that position, you're in the drop zone or you're just outside the drop zone, like what you alluded to earlier in the dressing room, you get players that don't say a word. You get players that go in the shell. When you need that performance, you need leaders. You need people that are all the sleeves up and fight. You need experience yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah you people do. going about experience. You need at least two or three experienced yeah. players as well as young lads with legs. Mm. But you need that. Like you said, vocal people. That, the team that we went to with, mm. I bet there were eight, nine. They mm. all had the say. You know, mm. when the yeah. team meetings, it's like a lot of people go, oh, I'm not mm. going to say anything. Yeah. I'm going to stay out of it. Like with the Devs, me, the Grange. Percy, everybody mm. had to say, no, I don't think this is right. And I think you learn more about the character of your team, Max, when you're on a, a run, a bad run. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because yeah. that's when you think, right, who's going to stand up and be kicked? Yeah. Who's going to roll it's, the sleeves up? It's yeah. easy for everyone to... Who fancies uh, it? Easy for everyone to have a say when you're winning and you're top of the league or you're doing well. That's easy, but you know when it's back to the wall and you, know, you, you don't know where the next point's coming from, that's when you tell the character of your team. England in the World Cup this mm. summer? No in chance. Russia? No chance. I don't think they have. No. Th I just think they'll struggle. I really do. Yeah. I think he's he's trying everything he can. We all young lads. Half of the mm -hmm. half of the team we brought in last time, I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, but I just think he'll struggle. I really do. I don't just don't think we're good enough. Yeah, and I, and I think the press have done what the, what the, the English press do. I mean, it's a thankless task being the England manager. Mm -hmm. And in fairness to him, he's gone his own way. He's left some of the, the so-called bigger names out. He's put youth in. Um, I hope he sticks to his guns, to be honest. When the World Cup comes round, mm. he, he sticks with what he wants and doesn't think, well, I've got to play in courses at Man City and he's yeah. played in the Champions League or I've got to play in courses. But realistically, when it comes round to Russia, is he going to take Abrahams who might get relegated no, and Swansea who might not no. score 10 goals? No. You know, it, it, it's difficult and, you know, people going about this golden generation of the youth kids that are coming through mm. with the 17s and all. That's great, but are they going to go on and forge a career at their respective parents? It's too early, yeah. Too early to tell. 17 is absolutely too early. But, but I, do, I, do, I do think that, you know, I think they'll get out the group England. Um, I think maybe quarterfinals is probably yeah. the best I could hope for. I think England can go on and win it. No, yeah. deluded. I mean, no, no, and, and I tell you I'll We tell always you say why. that before a tournament, don't we? No, uh, well, you, we probably do, but that's art rule in the head. Yeah. The way I look at England is that I think they're, um, I think the, the two full-backs... I think are as good as anything in world football. Mm. I think we've got three damn good goalkeepers. It looks as though um, he's sorting out the, the defensive partnership of the two centre-halves. Midfield is such an important integral area in football, as you know. Deli Alley just off the front two, and I'd have Eric Dyer. The two players for me that are so important for England is Adam Lallana and Jack Wilshire. If we haven't got any ball players in that middle of the park, if That's we've got we no creation, players. we're bollocks. But we've got how, no can, how can you? I mean, it's like Wenger. That's a problem. How can no you doubt. possibly think of Wilshire when he's played twenty-eight yeah. minutes Premiership football? He, he has got to move. But he's that, got to, he's in, got to in move January. But that's, got to, that, that's a, to get that's game time, isn't it? It's yeah, a definitely. perfect example, though, when people shout for Wilshire mm. of, a, of a kid who might be at Burnley or Swansea who's playing regular well, week mm. in. I've had it with drink water the other year. Didn't you? When, mm. when but I just don't think drink water is good enough. No. But then you, you take Wilshire, who, Wilshire, Storage, Carroll. You're going to take them to a, uh, a World Cup where, if you do well, hopefully you do well, mm. they might have to play four games in two weeks. Mm. They, they can't string ten games a season yeah. together most of the time. So yes. how can you trust as a manager, mm. Wilshire, Carroll, Storage, to stay fit over a two or three, four mm. week period? You can't do it. You're but wasting again, the place. But again, it is possible, isn't it? I mean, he hasn't had you know, that, that run of of injury free form but if but Gabba, if at Bournemouth last year he never tore up any trees and he played a lot for Bournemouth mm. and you speak to Bournemouth people he never did great for them yeah. and he was left out the team at times mm. talking about World Cup as well aren't we yeah, do you yeah know you know, it's but I do stage. think we need we need something in that middle of the park in, in terms of creativity need a Gaza well yeah. again I was looking at you know Gaza wasn't until the 25th of April 1990 Gaza wasn't on that plane because Bobby Robson didn't feel as though he could trust him. Mm. You know, there is someone that comes through late, a little bit like in the promotion playoffs. There's a team that comes up, has good form, goes into it with good form, then comes out the other end. Mm. And you never know. I mean, it just could be England. Because, I mean, in Harry Kane, you could see Harry Kane getting the golden boot, couldn't you, in Russia this year? If he gets a service. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. You know, and, and that's service. what it's all about. He's, service and getting, yeah. 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 He's on fire, but I just, I just look at 
that the England that have failed in in years gone by, in competitions gone by, when they've had the likes of Rooney, Gerrard, yeah. Lampard, Beckham, mm. who, no disrespect to this current England club, are all better players, yeah. and they failed with them. So I don't see anything that's going to tip my opinion to say, no, I think they can go and win it. Mm. And you look at the likes of Germany and Brazil and teams, but when it comes to the nitty-gritty mm. of competition football, they turn out the results. Tournament right? football. Tournament, oh, tournament, tournament football. Take no notice of yeah. friendlies. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's no such thing as a friendly when you, you know, you, you pros are playing. Yeah. Did I mean, Scotland get through? You, Oh no, Scotland. No, no, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> He's anti England in yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I just you gotta no, you gotta be realistic. But I don't think it's anyone it's you know, it's not being bad anti, it's yeah. being honest, isn't it? Of course it is, your yeah. honest opinion. Yeah. I always want us to do well. When it starts yeah. here, we all get the hype and we get excited and we go, Oh god again. Yeah. I don't think that I think no, what, what might go in the favour this year, I don't think many do really expect them to do brilliant at the World Cup. Mm. No. You know, where in years gone by, it's, yeah. you know, there has been a lot of hype at Euros and mm. World Cups, and it's it's failed miserably. Maybe with a, a bit less le less pressure on them this year, maybe they might do a little bit better. I still don't see them winning it. Though. Favorite World Cup year that you've had? 86, 90, 94, We didn't qualify. I liked eighty six, me. Did you? I was just getting into my football. Yeah. Twelve, thirteen year old. I did like that one. Yeah, I mean, eighty six was great, and you know, the hand of God, and then Maradona's second goal. But my favorite one was was the eighty two World Cup, and I think. I think that was the yeah. Brazil team of '82, yeah. probably the greatest team never to win the World Cup. Zico were there, Socrates, yeah. people like that. I remember Scotland, David Neri, brilliant goal, one nil up against Brazil. Well, we couldn't have done a worse. Team. We lost about four to five, one in the end, but <laughs> probably the '82 or '86. But again, going back to that '82, what a great team that they had. Yeah, and then they they unfortunately in that as well, wasn't he? Trev yeah, Yeris scored a goal Keegan. after a few seconds, didn't he? Against the uh, against the French, we went yeah. one one nil up early. Mm. About twenty seven seconds, wasn't he? Mm. Well, and I'm, I was talking to uh, Tony Mauler, obviously yeah. great player from the the Villa European Cup winning team, and obviously Villa won the year. Was it eighty one, eighty two? Yeah, Villa so won the year. So the, the eighty two. Oh, yeah, so obviously you've got Gary Shaw, you got mm. Peter with you, got Mortimer, uh, Tony Mauler, Cowens. Yeah. You know how many of them made the eighty two squad? I don't think any did, did they? Peter with. With her, yeah. Peter with was yeah. he took Keegan who was injured he took Brooklyn who was over yeah. he took Trevor I think who was so that was Ron Greenwood and that was just the I think it was you know obviously Villa weren't a fashionable club when mm. they won it but you look at the ability they had in that oh. team you know I'm no Villa fan by any stretch Same but Ma Morley Cowan's probably the most underrated yeah. midfield of his generation how didn't more than one of them go to that World Cup at that at that time early eighties Tony Morley had got to be the best left winger in the country really yeah flying flying fly yeah. machine. Flying machine, Tony. Um, but it surprised me because I would have thought Tony said they were all in the squad, yeah. but he said o only with he went. But again, that, that's that's the thing about the England manager, isn't it? Yeah. It's about recruitment, isn't it? Yeah. Getting them players, putting them in, and then making them. Is it him that picks it? Sorry? Is it him that picks the team? The squad? I don't know. I you think know, if you're not the manager and you're not picking the squad, then you shouldn't be the bloody manager, mm. should you? Well, let's be honest. To the 82 World Cup, Keegan was just picked because he was Keegan. Yeah, he was, yeah. And mm. probably the same with Brooklyn. Yeah. And I remember him coming on late in one of the games and missing a great chance. Spain, drawing yeah, nil nil. Missed, missed a brilliant header. Yeah. Um, so maybe if they'd have stuck a with or a short in there, maybe it'd have been a different story. Because I think right? that year was the only year that England have competed in a, in a World Cup and not got beaten. Mm. Apart from 66, obviously, when yeah, they won yeah. it. Mm. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. And 1990, the semi finals, penalty shootouts. Yeah. We're not very good at them, are we? No, we're not. <laughs> well, I always said earlier on, you know, it's all right yeah. saying you've you got a free, free shot from 12 yards. Let me tell you, when you're in a big game like the playoff final, you, you look at that goal and it looks about that big. Yeah. Uh, and the keeper looks 20 foot tall. So, you know, I would never knock any player for missing it, especially if, you you know, you're on about work. And even having the bottle to go up and take yeah, it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't or, think he's taking it. He's the walk up, isn't it? Horse wouldn't know anything about that, Gab, <laughs> to be honest with you. I remember looking around in the playoff. <laughs> he was hiding behind. Yeah, I mean, that, that walk up. Yeah. You know, from yeah. the from the centre spot, yeah. you, you don't think you're going to make it. Your legs feel like jelly, and yeah. God knows what it's like in a World Cup. And also, as well, when the goalkeeper is um, is getting off his line and he's having a something's going on, he's got to try to put you off, hasn't he? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I'd do it, I'd do it exactly the same. Because that walk up must be the worst part about it. And yeah. then all you want to do is just run up and kick the ball. I think the main thing is I never even used to look at the goalies when I took yeah. a penalty. I always used to try and blast them to my left keeper's right mm. and hope that it'd you know, be hard enough to get in. Uh, I think you've just got to make your mind up. Yeah. You've got to say, right, don't even look where the keeper is. I'm going to hit this hard and low or high and top corner. Yeah. I think when you start running up and you think, oh no, he's there, I'm going to change yeah. it. I think that's when you get that's when you get trouble. It's a lot with the bet, any Don't change your bet if you yeah, fancy stick, something. Yeah. Stick to your guns. Yeah. Chris, we got anything else? Hey. 
<laughs> we got any more questions before we uh, we wrap it up today? What are you doing wrapping up your Christmas presents? <laughs> <laughs> your Christmas presents. You got a charity. Uh, do coming up soon. I have a week on Friday, first week of December, Friday, at yeah. the Solly Old Social Club, Land Rover Club. The Good old, stuff. Old Land Rover Club. Reggae night. Reggae night. Brilliant. And uh, you're doing an auction as well, aren't you? Yeah, we've got some prize. We've got loads of prizes. Believe it or not, we've got some Botox, which, uh, <laughs> uh, which people have done it. We've got loads of like uh, I've got a Chelsea shirt signed okay. and, and just all different kinds of things. Just again, to, just to raise money. We've got a little something for you as well. For you, oh, thank you. Uh, for Do you need any more, Jeff? Any more? Donations? Well, whatever. Yeah, whatever people can donate, like for raffle prize or auction yeah, yeah, yeah. prize, it would be really, really appreciative. So again, go to your Facebook page yeah. or your Twitter yeah, page, yeah, or definitely. get in contact with us, and then yeah. we'll pass it on for you. Thank you very much. Hopefully it'll raise a few. Right, any more before we finally wrap it up? No, I think that's it. Guys, anything else that you want to discuss before we go? No. What, let's what you got please on? try to get a win. What yeah. you got on this afternoon? This afternoon I'm at uh, coaching at Charmswood. Don't know yep. what she's doing. I'm what? going down to an house. Somebody's kicked one of my doors off in, internally, so I've got to go and repair that. <laughs> believe so it, love it, believe it or not. Player, exactly. It? <laughs> the glamour. The <laughs> glamour of it all. Beckham won't be doing that, would he, this yeah. afternoon? I can't see Ronaldo and all these lot now, when they retire, doing stuff like that and putting things back into Definitely the community. Definitely not. I, I, when I were at West Brom, when we did the Great Escape, yeah. we that was on the Sunday and on the Saturday night because... Uh, I thought I were going to start the game. Uh, we were refurbing in house. Now we're knocking a wall through at twelve o'clock at night. We got a game at three o'clock that afternoon. You did that with your head, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Thanks for your time again, Dev. Cheers, Gab. See you in two weeks' time. Cheers, and Not Jeff, a problem. Anytime you want to come yep, in, definitely. You know, um, yep. be part of it. Yeah, right. definitely. Devlin's the gaffer. Yeah. Oh, he's never been my gaffer. He's never captained me. You know I tell you what to do. <laughs> you know right, guys, thanks for listening and watching. Good night. God bless. Good afternoon. We'll see you in two weeks' time. Cheers. Good luck.